Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over a $600 mini gaming PC. Now this is probably one of the most fun builds I've done in a long time. As for $600, you're going to be getting some serious performance, be able to play almost any game maxed out on 1080p, some of the newer games you'll have to turn it down to high, but still you're going to get very, very good performance. And on top of that, it's in a really cool little mini ITX case. I also have a couple other builds you guys may want to check out. So I have a $400 gaming PC, this is also a fairly small build, and for the price you can get some really killer performance. On the flip side, if you want to spend a little bit more, I also do have a $1,000 gaming PC, which is going to deliver some stellar performance at 1080p and even higher resolutions. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i3-3220 CPU. Now for gaming, this is going to be really, really perfect, especially considering the price. So the reason I went with the i3-3220 is because it does have a dual-core design clocked at 3.3GHz, and it also does feature hyper-threading, which allows Windows to see it as a quad-core CPU. As a new Intel Ivy Ridge CPU based on their new 22 nanometer process, there are several reasons why we went with the Core i3. So for starters, it's going to give us plenty of performance. So it's even 10% faster than the older Core i3s, and it's going to be plenty to handle pretty much any game we throw at it. Now, one other option we could have gone with would be an AMD APU, and it's going to be a very similar price as well as a very similar level of performance, but it almost needs twice as much power to run. And considering that, of course, the less heat the better, this is definitely going to give the nod to the Core i3 for only about $120. For a graphics card, we're going to be using a Gigabyte Radeon HD 7850. Now for the money, you cannot beat this graphics card, period. If you want to be able to match or exceed the performance, you're going to have to spend $30, $40, even $50 more. Now for the, as far as the performance goes and what kind of games it can play, you can expect pretty much max settings in most games at 1080p. Now some newer games such as Battlefield 3 and Far Cry 3, Battlefield 3 and Far Cry 3, that works, will need to be turned down just a little bit. So you're probably going to set them on about high or so. Uh, but most other games, especially if it's like a year or two old, can be run at ultra and max, all that kind of stuff with zero problems at all. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that I chose to go with the one gigabyte version of this card for this build. Now, the main reason is just price. The one gigabyte version is really, really underpriced in my opinion. It probably should be at least $20 more expensive. But since it's not, we're all good to go. But anyway, besides that, uh, the two gigabyte card would be a better option if you do want to use your computer for a long time. So if you want to future proof it a little bit, some games will start to be using two gigabytes of memory as opposed to the one on this card. But right now, it's not a problem. And for only about $160, this is going to be well worth it. For a motherboard, we're going to be using the ASUS p 8 h 77i. Now this is an awesome little mini ITX board. So for starters, it has pretty much all the features you would expect in a normal size motherboard. So you have a full size PCI Express slot so you can slide in your graphics card without any problems at all. It also has up to six SATA, well not up to, it has six SATA ports. So you can plug in all kinds of hard drives, DVD drives, whatever you want. There's going to be plenty of expandability options. Now this is an H77 board so it's not going to be overclockable, but since the CPU isn't overclockable either, not really a big deal. For only about $100, this is going to be perfect. For memory, we're going to be using 8GB of Samsung DDR3 RAM. Now this is absolutely awesome stuff. I recently used it in my $1500 build, and it's going to work just as well here. So if you take a look at it, it looks very boring, so it's actually going to be quite a bit shorter than normal RAM, and it also has zero heat sinks or anything like that. But don't let looks fool you, this is some of the highest performing stuff that you can buy. So it's going to be normally clocked at 1600 MHz, which is going to be totally fine for most motherboards, and if you don't want to overclock it, you can just leave it there and deliver some really, really nice performance. But if you do want to overclock it, it can be overclocked up to 2133 MHz in most cases. I don't want to say all the time, you may have some issues and it might not always overclock super, super high, but overall, for only about $35, you cannot beat this stuff. For our hard drive, we're going to be using a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue. So this is a boring little hard drive, but it definitely does get the job done. So with 500 gigabytes of capacity, that should be enough for lots of games, music, pictures, videos, all that kind of fun stuff. Although if that is not enough for you, you can upgrade it to a one terabyte drive for about $20 more. On top of that, it is a 7200 RPM drive, which means it's going to be fast, not quite as fast as a black drive and nowhere near as fast as an SSD, but it's going to be plenty to get the job done. Now, if you guys do want, you could upgrade this to an SSD as well as that one terabyte option that I mentioned earlier. And again, I will link to all the parts and the different options that you guys could choose in the description of this video. But if you want to go with the 500 gigabyte option, which is what we use in this build, it's going to run you about 60 bucks. For a case, we're going to be using the BitPhoenix Prodigy. Now this is an awesome little mini ITX case and it looks like absolutely nothing else out there. So, well, okay, maybe with the possible exception of a, like a shrink raid version of the Mac Pro. But overall, really, really cool looking case. And it is available in several colors, including white, which is what I chose here. But you can also pick it up in black, red, and orange. Now the cool thing about this is that there really are no major compromises. So generally, mini ITX builds have always been about compromise. So you're dealing with a smaller motherboard, you can't put as powerful of a CPU on there, maybe no graphics card, 
small cases, there's gonna be a lot of compromise, but the Fit Phoenix Prodigy does away with a lot of that. It fits full-size graphics cards, so the 7850 fits in there with plenty of room to spare. And on top of that, it also does have a full-size mount for an ATX power supply, as well as lots and lots of hard drive cages, and you can put SSDs all over the place. Probably the coolest thing about it though is that you can get some really nice performance. So it comes with a pair of 120mm fans, which are just fine, and that's what we're going to be using in this build. But if you wanted to, you could even fit a 240mm radiator on the roof of the case, which is really, really cool for something that is this small. For about $80, this is going to be well worth it. For a power supply, we're going to be using a 430 watt Corsair CX430. Now the cool thing about this is that this is a cheap power supply without being cheaply made, and there's a big difference there. So you're going to get some really nice performance and efficiency thanks to the 80 plus bronze rating on there, and it's also a little bit smaller than a normal size ATX power supply. Now the reason I mention that is that the Prodigy definitely does have a little bit of a cramped area as far as where you put the power supply in. So that little bit of extra space that you get since this power supply is smaller means that you have more room to route all your cables and all that kind of fun stuff. For only $40, this is going to be perfect. Last but not least, you want to consider picking up a copy of Windows 7 or Windows 8. Now I'm going to leave this totally up to you guys, I know a lot of people really like Windows 7 and a lot of people like Windows 8, but basically there's not going to be any huge difference. Both are going to be able to play tons of games, there's really no really major differences as far as compatibility that I found. A couple of corner cases where stuff won't work on Windows 8, but in general it's going to work just fine. And of course with Windows 8 you're going to have more updates and all that kind of stuff in the future. So whatever you want to choose, it's up to you, it'll run you anywhere between $70 and $100. So there you go guys, an awesome little $600 mini ITX gaming build. Now I'll have links to all the parts I mentioned in the description of this video, prices are constantly fluctuating, and I will also add some additional options that you guys may want to consider. So if you want, for example, a DVD drive, you want a little bit more powerful processor, you want a bigger hard drive, whatever, I'll add some additional options that you guys can choose from. If you guys are interested in more, I have a full tutorial showing you how to put this computer together, which you guys can check that out here. And on top of that, I also will be doing a giveaway of this system very soon. So if you guys want to be sure that you catch that, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next one.